Hello, my name is Professor Charles Burstone, and today, I'd like to take you on a journey through a concept that has become central to orthodontic biomechanics, the six geometries. This idea emerged from my fascination with understanding how forces shape tooth movement, and today, I hope to help you understand it too. The six geometries are based on the relationships between brackets and how these relationships define the force systems that influence tooth movement. Imagine a simple scenario. Two teeth with brackets placed at different angles. Now, when you insert a straight wire between them, it generates a complex force system, a set of forces and moments. However, this system is not as straightforward to predict as it might seem. Various factors, such as the angles of the brackets and the wire's properties, make it challenging to anticipate the exact forces that will be applied. That's why understanding these geometries is crucial for clinicians to avoid unwanted movements and achieve precise results. Now these geometries represent the different configurations of brackets and the angles between them. They're labeled from geometry 1 to geometry 6, each one producing distinct forces and moments. The geometry between the brackets determines not just how the teeth will move, but whether that movement is what you intended. Let's suppose this simple case, where both teeth are misaligned, but in an equal and opposite manner. If you were to use a straight wire in this case, both teeth would move but not necessarily in a desirable way. The teeth might align with each other, but cause unwanted tilting in the occlusal plane. As we can see, the task of correcting a malocclusion is far more complex than simply inserting a piece of wire between teeth, as some colleagues might wrongly believe. Achieving controlled and predictable tooth movement requires a deeper understanding of the force systems at play. Things become more complicated in reality, because a malocclusion is not just two teeth, it's a series of two tooth segments, each with complex relationships between them. It's important to point out that the force systems produced by an appliance depend not only on the relationship between the brackets, but, more critically, on the relationship between the wire and the brackets. For instance, by learning how to apply specific bends in the wire, such as the V-bend, we can generate precise force systems to achieve targeted tooth movements. When a V-bend is placed at the center between two brackets, it creates a force system similar to geometry 6, where moments of equal magnitude but opposite directions are produced. This can be very useful, for example, when closing a diastema. An even more creative solution is the truncated V-bend. Instead of placing a single V-bend in a stiff appliance like a transpalatal bar, TPA, two smaller bends are made at the ends of the bar. This technique maintains the same geometric relationship, allowing the application of balanced couples to control tooth movement achieving highly efficient molar derotation. This is why molar derotation is much faster with a TPA compared to clear aligners. By mastering such techniques, we can achieve more predictable and faster results, significantly improving both the efficiency and precision of treatment. So, the six geometries, along with the principle of equilibrium, guide us in planning and predicting tooth movement. It doesn't matter whether you're using straight wires, loops, or even aligners. What's crucial is understanding the language of forces and moments, and how we can control them to achieve the desired result. Remember the key takeaway. It's not the wire, the bracket, or the aligner that does the thinking. It's you, the clinician.